Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today I'm just going to show you quickly what a blacklight does with opal. I'm sure you've come across the phenomena before and have seen that this is a nice little way to noodle through a lot of opal piles, especially if you've got darkness on your side and a little blacklight. Now I've unfortunately only got one wavelength of blacklight and you can get them in a range and some are better with some opals than others. So we'll just do a quick little investigation. I've already had a sneak peek at some of these and I know the outcome for most of them anyway but just so that you guys can see it for yourself with your own eyes and through the uh, eyes of this little opal I've never done it with an American opal before so we're going to just quickly turn off the lights now and have a quick look at I've got American opal here I've got a Cooperpedi shell, Cooperpedi crystal got some Andamooka matrix, uh, Mintaby, Lightning Ridge black uh, boulder and some painted lady from Andamooka. So I'll just turn off the lights quickly now and let's see what we find. All right, here we are with the lights off. Here's the black light. And if we zoom in quite a bit, you can see here that the American opal is highlighting quite well. The camera is not wanting to focus very well, so let's give it something to really focus on. <laughs> Alright, so the American Opal is quite responsive to this UV and I'm sure if I just cover it for a few seconds and then completely remove it, we'll see it post... post exposure. 3, 2, 1... Ah, to me it's glowing, but to you guys it's not coming up on camera. That's uh, very unfortunate. So it glows even after removal of the light. It might actually be easier to show it with the lights on, but we'll have a quick look at a few other ones first. So, quite responsive, the Cooperpedi Crystal. Now, unfortunately, this is looking at Andamooka and it's not, it's not playing ball at all. Absolutely nothing on the Andamooka Matrix. Meant to be here. Glows pretty well, you can see it there with a bit of the uh, dirt dirt attached but the opal itself glows quite well bit of lightning ridge it's a little bit active but nothing too much the backside isn't at all but the front is yeah it's it's showing up boulder opal now boulder opal if you look at that you're seeing basically nothing so black lighting boulder opal is not something that you should really give too much of an effort. This has got two faces of boulder, of opal across it, and neither side is showing up anything at all, really. It's just pure black. Endemuka painted lady, so the host stone, nothing much. And then the actual opal does respond quite well. Oh, you saw it there for a moment. This is me holding the light right up against it, and if I take it away quickly, you see that quick little glow, and then the camera kind of defocuses on it, which is a little bit annoying. And then Cooperpedi Shell Opal, very, very responsive to it. The white Cooperpedi Opal, you'll definitely find that black lighting, and that's why the black lighters have so much success. Now, I've got the lights back on, and I'm just shining the UV right onto this American, American Opal. And if I just quickly remove it, you'll see there, for a moment there, it had a bit of a glowing effect post-exposure. That's pretty common as well for most of this opal. The stuff that's really responsive. This is actually probably a better way to see how responsive they are. So, this is the Cooperpedi crystal. A little bit of a glow. And then, yeah, checking some of the ones that didn't really respond well, so... Boulder Opal. See there, it's just... It's just not interested in the black light at all. The Iron Stone or the Opal. Whereas everything else has a really strong effect. So, if I just pocket that one, you can see there. If you were underground and you had your little black light or you are noodling a pile, you would definitely see some of this shell material pop up without a problem in the world. You'd also come across a little alien, so if you're 
out at Cooper PD and you're just shining a light around and see something like this, probably just run. There you go, even the Lightning Ridge Black Opal. And all of this is being done with a 330, 330 wavelength UV light, which is actually not the best. But you can see, in most cases it gets the job done. The Mintaby stuff is really responsive to it as well. And of course, Endomuka Matrix, where you're getting tiny speckles of opal amongst sandstone looking stuff. It's, you could see just there, you can see a few little speckles where the opal sits, but apart from that, you're really just looking at a, a lump of rock. You're not going to pick that up very well. The concrete is not very responsive. Even the Andamuka Painted Lady, pretty responsive. So yeah, hopefully that's just quickly demonstrated a bit of the black lighting stuff. This piece of Mintaby is quite nice actually. I don't know why I haven't worked it. Probably because it's got a bit of crazing on it. But yeah, you've seen here that a few of the opals are quite responsive, but if you're looking for Andamuka Matrix, don't really bother. If you're looking for Boulder Opal, you're not going to have much chance at all. Unless you get a really thick piece of opal, and even then, most of the time, it's not actually going to respond. So, if you're looking for the others, though, you've got a good chance. So, give black lighting a try. Maybe don't go wandering around someone else's paddocks in the middle of the night with some black lights. That could get you in trouble. And also, if you're going to be somewhere in the middle of the night, make sure you don't fall down a hole or anything, because you the last thing you want is to fall down into a mine while you're blind with just the black light. So stay safe, noodle a safe little pile in the comfort of your backyard or something, but yeah, stay safe and uh, don't go wandering around at night. There are roads and holes in the ground. See you guys. 